you pissed a lot of people off as well, right? You know, like in terms of your gameplay. Well, it's a lot of those uh, times, of course, with Michael Jordan and those guys. Michael Jordan doesn't say nice things about you always. <laughs> Probably not. You know, Gary Payton, as well as the guys that you played against, the Tim Hardaway. But those are the great things that you love because that's respect. And one thing about us guards and us players, you don't want that constant pressure all day long, bringing the ball off the court, having to ward somebody off, fighting somebody to get across half court, then run your offense and so forth. But I became that guy because I understood what I brought to the table in terms of me and my strengths and what going to allow me to continue to be on the floor, to be recognized, to be a disruptor. You know, I had to be that type of player. Even though it was a pest to them, it was my job. And in terms of me being able to continue to keep serving the organization that I was representing, to be able to continue to be the player that I wanted to be. And I knew that that could be, you know, a, an advantage for me in that regards to be able to get in guys' head, to be able to disrupt them, take time off the clock, you get the ball across half court. And then once they do, you could cross half court, be able to maintain that aggressiveness and play them, you know, very hard and make them earn everything they got. If you want to learn more about how to turn your weaknesses into superpowers like Muggsy Bose did, click on the link right over there to hear the full conversation I have with this NBA superstar.